hello everyone uh, welcome to this uh, discussion about the current situation because of the pandemic which is affecting all over the uh, world many people all over the world so here we have uh, actually we are like we have one common thing between all of us like we everyone each of us have done bachelors in the same university in india and in different years so we just thought like why not share our experience because most of us are staying all over europe us canada different parts of the world so we just wanted to share a, and have a short discussion about how everyone is facing the current situation what are the problems what are the policies and all other things surrounding the what is happening there so i think we have like some uh, Orka from USA, maybe you can raise your hand, whoever I call your name, and then you can give a short intro after I finish. And I have Ashish from Ashish Adhikari from Canada. And then we have Susant Sahu from Bhubaneswar, India, if I'm not wrong. And then we have Dibya Lochan Meher from from Bhutan. Dibya and Meher from Sweden. Hello. <laughs> then we have Somya Ranjan Naik from Naik, right? Mumbai. Yeah, IIT Bombay. Somya Ranjan Naik from IIT Bombay. And then we have Yoshit from Russia. Hi, everyone. Madan Mohan Behera from France, Dunkirk, France. I don't see Madan. Maybe he's busy in something else. And then we have Ashish uh, Misra from Frankfurt, Germany. Anurag Behera. Anurag Behera again from India. Because India is a huge country, so we have three representatives from India. So that you can know better Specifically, about... Specifically, I'm different. from Bangalore. Yeah, he's from Bangalore. So we have like people from Bangalore, Mumbai, and Odisha. Uh, I mean, Bhubaneswar. Bhubaneswar. So maybe we can start with Arka because I'm seeing him on the screen for the maximum amount of time. So we can start with Arka and he can give a short introduction and where is he from and like a short background. Everyone can introduce themselves. Go. Oh, that's great. Good that I have more screen time. Anyways, to start things with, hi guys, I'm Orko Chaudhary. I am working as a data scientist and for a media company and I'm currently in New York, um, specifically in Queens, New York City. Um, to start things with the situation, to be very honest, it's not very good here. Uh, people are falling sick like crazy and it's uh, the number speaks for itself. So next we move to Ashish, Ashish Adhikari from Canada. Ashish. Yeah, um, you're able to see me, right? Yeah. Yeah, so hi, I'm Ashish Adhikari and I'm, I'm working as a Salesforce developer in um, Accenture in Canada. I moved to Canada last year in January in freezing winters. And uh, yeah, I've been working from home since um, this um, the pandemic started and yeah, the, so so we will move on to other people then. We will have a good discussion today. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So next we go to Somya Ranjan Naik from IIT Bombay, India. Hi, I'm Somya Ranjan Naik. I'm a fifth year PhD scholar uh, from IIT Bombay. And uh, presently I am pursuing my PhD in Metallurgical Engineering and Material Science. And basically, I am from Bhadrak, and uh, now presently I am at my home. So I hope that we'll be having a very good discussion. So pass it up to the next week. Okay. So next we go to Madan Mohan Behra from France, Dunkirk, France. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Madan Mohan. Uh, I am currently in France right now. I am doing my PhD. Uh, this is my first year of PhD. So 
i like for for over a month now i am at home because of the lockdown in the entire country so it would be really great to listen to hear the whatever is happening all around the world from the people we know personally as we share the same alma mater so hoping for a good discussion thank you uh, okay so next move next we go to ashish misra from germany hello everyone uh, my name is ashish misra and currently i'm working as an embedded software engineer for continental here in frankfurt region of germany uh, thank you okay, that was a nice short intro and next we go to dibya lochan meher from sweden hi everyone uh, i am a master student at kdh and i study sustainable production development and uh, i am in stockholm sweden thanks i moved here last year in august okay so next we go to yoshit from russia hello everyone uh, i am yoshit manti currently in moscow i have been here since last two years i am a master student's final year and i'm my, my specialization is systems engineering in space in uh, space stream basically it's very interesting to work with russian government but you uh, this situation is very pathetic and it feel like a mass experiment going on with me in my uh, personal room for last more than one and a half month yeah it should be a good interesting discussion with all of my alma mater okay uh so i don't see the others yeah so next we have anurag behra from bangalore india hi all i am anurag behra and i work for lnd technology services as an automotive engineer and looking forward for a great discussion okay so i we have susant susant uh hello everyone uh, it's uh, really great to see you all after such a long time so i am susant and uh, currently from bhubneswar india i just completed my uh, post graduation in management uh one month back and uh, fortunately i managed to reach home but uh, due to this pandemic situation uh, we couldn't have our graduation ceremony so there have been lot of uh, you know uh, sad moments and saroj all across the all across in our campus so yeah it will be great uh, discussing with you all and knowing the ground uh, scenario of all the countries okay great so let's start with the first point because i think the intro might be already too much for each of you is watching the video but it's necessary to get the context so let's start with the first point so we had prepared a short discussion point so the first point is how is the pandemic affecting your personal and professional life so maybe we can start with arka again yeah so as i said uh, i've been working here for last 3 years in the city and um definitely i've been working from home uh, luckily i'm working in a media industry which is not much affected by this pandemic because people are staying at home they're watching more television so somehow it's not that affected as some other industries are but yeah this is a new thing for me as uh, it's not just working from home and i'm stuck at home it's very risky to go outside and if i go outside i should have my mask and i should have gloves uh, the sanitizers come back take a shower so all these things are very important like maintaining hygiene but yeah working has hasn't been very different cuz i already i have already been working with uh, we have a team in india so i have already used to working remotely and work in that fashion so it's not much of a difference work wise but yeah the lifestyle has definitely changed before i move to someone else uh, i want to also just tell briefly about myself although everyone knows who is watching the video might know so i i have been living in netherlands for more than four and a half years and uh, i am doing a phd so 
you will hear about my experience in Netherlands after everyone finishes. So next we go to Dibya Lochan from Sweden, who will discuss the same thing, like how has the pandemic affected your personal and professional life? So, yeah, the pandemic, uh, being a student, the pandemic has affected really a lot. Uh, like, you know, it's tough to work with teams because many of the assignments, they are have to be handed over as teams. And as uh, the team is scattered over Germany or Canada, as in my case, or in India also. So it's uh, a bit tough to work remotely and collaborate on those parts. And also some of the um, some of the courses, they are better taught uh, face to face uh, offline rather than being online. So that's quite a challenge that I'm facing on professional part and personal part. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough to just stay indoors for about a month or so right now. Yeah, that's how it is. But yeah, we do get outside. Uh, there's no lockdown, official lockdown over here. OK, that's okay. good to know. So next we go to Madan Mohan Behra from France. Yes, uh, so so this lockdown started like uh, one month uh, back. So I have been in my apartment for the last uh, one, one more than a little more than a month. So as of personal thing, personal life, as I can say, is that I go out of my apartment really, really like very less number of times, uh, maybe once in a week. And it is really difficult because you don't do any physical exercise really. I try to do something every day just to keep my body relaxed and uh, maybe to make, it, make my mind working. So personally, it is really very difficult. And if you try to find things in the shops like groceries or something, there are certain groceries you don't get or don't find in the shops because of lack of their availability as all the transport services in uh, France is stopped except for the transport services in city is going on but no, no transport services like the trains and buses going from one city to the other and regarding the personal life it is really difficult because I'm doing a PhD which is 100% based on experiments and since I'm not able to go to the lab, so I cannot do any experiment. And the only thing I can do is literature review and discuss about what results I have. Since it is just the six months, have been six months uh, since I started my PhD, I don't have enough results as well. So in the meetings that we have every week, I guess I don't discuss a lot of stuff. We discuss a lot of administrative stuff and not much of technical stuff. So that's how it has been the problem. Okay, next we move to Ashish Adhikari. Hey, hi. So um, it's been so, so when I tell personally my life, um, it has affected a bit because I was supposed to travel to India on 3rd of April after, after a year and a half. Um, to meet my parents, to meet my, to meet all my friends, but it all got ruined because of the lockdown. And um, yeah, I mean, I even don't know when this situation is going to end. And I was really looking forward to go home, but um, yeah, that's that's how it is, and uh, that's really how we're supposed to live right now. And but personally, right now, initially it was it was bad. It was bad. Like I like going outdoors. Um, I I have a blog of mine. So I like to shoot outside, but I was not able to do it. But right now I have I have settled down and I'm trying to learn new skills and doing music at home, um, learning new skills. So I'm, I'm kind of adjusting to it. And if you ask me professionally, well, um, I work directly on the client side. So it was a mostly a client facing role where we had where, where I, work, I was working as a developer and it was a bank client um, here in Montreal. So yeah, it was difficult in in the in the start, but like since you're a developer, you can work anywhere from you want. So that's that was not an issue. Uh, so we all connect with my teams in India and um, the team here, and even my company's leadership is supporting us uh, in whatever way as possible in terms of uh, work time flexibilities. So we have settled down. So it's been it's been fine. I mean, the best thing is personally we are getting to connect with a lot of friends and see we are doing a call right now. So. Nothing better, better, better than that. So, yeah, we got to do what we got to do. 
Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah. if you want some positivity at each one of us who is watching us, so then you can follow his Asis. Uh, he has a page in Instagram, I think. I'll put it in the description below. So you can follow it if you want uh, to get some really nice cool landscapes and positivity in this hour. Sure, sure, absolutely. Do follow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next we go to Susanth from India. Uh, so talking about my personal life, I would say not much changed because my personal space is uh, similar to what I used to have before the lockdown, like eat, sleep, workout, work and repeat. So personal space, uh, not much affected. And in fact, I'm having a more quality personal life because I'm able to spend more quality time with my family. I can understand all of your pain as you have been uh, staying outside India and that too without family. But here, fortunately, I am with my family. So that's why I'm getting a better, uh, you know, time here. And uh, professional life, uh, maybe it is, again, I am fortunate uh, that all my exams, all my academics uh, is over, uh, was over before the lockdown. And uh, we managed to complete our graduation trip as well. So this period was supposed to be a vacation period. Uh, so not much affecting the corporate life, but again, uh, we were supposed to join. I am so I was supposed to join the corporate life again uh, after let's say one month. But because of this pandemic, I am expecting that there can be delayed in the joining time. And there have been news that few companies, they have revoked their job offers to the students in Premier B schools of India, which is something worrying a lot because in this time when the economic slowdown was happening for last one year, and again, all the global institutions have uh, predicted that a lot more worse economic recession might happen. So that is again worrying for... Uh, students who are graduating from B schools or engineering colleges. Uh, that's all about my personal and professional life and how it is getting affected. Okay, so next we go to Somya Ranjan Bhai from India. As I have already said that I'm a fifth year research scholar uh, at IIT Bombay. So fifth year is a time where we basically uh, need to wrap up the things, we need to write our thesis, we need to complete our simulations, our experiments. So that was something which I was in, involved and uh, busy in. So it was on 17th of March that we get, a, that, uh, get, a, get an email from a director that you have just 72 hours to uh, leave the campus. So it was a very difficult time for all of us because some or the other way we were doing something which we had to leave in between. And uh, getting tickets were also very difficult. Uh, like within a couple of hours, the rates were skyrocketing. And uh, I have a senior of mine who had to go to Manipur and uh, ticket flight cost was around 29,000. Luckily, I, I got cheap, uh, cheaper uh, flight, flight ticket at cheaper rate and I reached my hometown, Bhadra. And uh, because my work involves both uh, simulation and experimental uh, experiments, so simulation I have been able to run from home uh, but again, uh, the efficiency that you get in your lab, which has uh, been uh, a personal, personal space for me since years, that efficiency I'm not getting at home. Uh, and uh, experimental parts are something which, uh, anyways, no one can do anything. And they are like stuck up and uh, things are going to get delayed. But uh, anyways, we have to accept that uh, this, has, this, is, this is something which is... Uh, which has affected everyone. So getting into depression or the th getting into negativity is something which is not uh, expected at this time. <clears throat> uh, uh, life at home is like uh, many of you uh, are experiencing. It's like uh, eat, sleep, uh, rest, repeat. And uh, actually, I barely fit into the clothes which I wore when I came to home. I have added, I think, five, six, seven kilos. So <laughs> that is something which is, uh, um, I think, is going to impact me a lot and then apart from it yes as uh, some of one, one of you had uh, said that uh, i am having a good uh, quality family life now because it was always that i used to come home like for a week or a half and then i had to rush but now it's like we have lots of time uh, staying together 
uh, so this is all about my 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 space that i'm having now okay so next we go to ashish misra from germany um <clears throat> So fortunately, I haven't been affected a lot as far as the pandemic is concerned because the work is going fine. Personally, I'm doing well. I'm healthy, but that doesn't mean that uh, people here are doing all right. So companies, smaller companies here are shutting down. Even the bigger companies are doing cost cuttings. Some of the smaller startups are finding it really tough to keep the uh, keep the company running. And most of the smaller startups and companies which have uh, lesser liquidity of cash, they cannot play. they cannot just pay um, employee salaries and sustain the company for longer that is why they have registered themselves for uh, help at the agency for um, uh, the german agentur which is the agency for social security and help where you get 60% of the uh, take home salary from the state but uh, overall the scenario is not very pretty but i am doing fine to answer your question okay it's good that assis is like really well prepared like very compact and very point to the point answer uh, so next we go to anurag behra from india uh, uh, hi everyone so on a personal front it's like no more work from home but it's basically staying at office it's that kind of a feel it's like uh, you do almost a work no more of 9 hours or 8 hours a day but almost whenever you receive a call from the client or from your seniors so that's how the work front has changed and the situation out here in the locality also like even if you go to buy a grocery in front of the grocery shops there are boxes drawn up. so like even to stand up in the line or to queue up in the line to buy a grocery you need to maintain the social distancing and if you don't have a mask the organized retail sector shops won't allow you to just get in they are also having a thermal scan of you so that's how the life has changed and if you uh, ask about the personal perspective then it's also about eat sleep cook and then sleep so yeah that's from my side Yeah, I can relate to that. That's very true. So next, we go to Yoshit from Russia. Uh, uh, it's a very good, uh, I would say, personal experience shared by my seniors here. I have a very mixed feeling about this uh, closed down, shut down of everything. Basically, I'm in the last semester of my thesis, and as uh, one of my seniors said, he is in. almost the verge of his graduation and both experiments and lab works goes hand in hand so uh, on my personal prospect i had a collab with the dlr and i was supposed to go there for an experiment and it all of a sudden called off so i have to entirely change my uh, shift my focus of research and i have to change it so that's why a drastic change on my research within a 30 days time and it took all from scratch again to begin and collab and to work do it again on my personal front it is really difficult for me to cook uh, and i have been teaching myself this is a lesson from last one year surprisingly i felt like i can experiment with new dishes by watching youtube with a limited recipe mentioned in the youtube comments and i have taught myself how to cook a kheer well delicious in this uh, quarantine life apart from that studies are part of my life since uh, like bachelor and my uh, masters here so i feel like i'm reading different books right now and that gives me a change of mind it's not no more technical it's fiction it's romantic books it's a uh, comedy books and that gives you a creativity of doing something i go through the fun escape uh, art by our senior madan bhai and i am mean, i'm getting inspired by that so i'm following lot of these pages and i'm trying to doodle out something that's again on my personal part personal life i am learning something new even in this quarantine i feel like this is an experiment of mars sustenance and this will help me to understand how humanity will survive on mars well it's technical 
but yes you get a feel of it especially in moscow when you cannot go outside let me tell you a scenario from last one week you cannot predict the weather for every 5 to 10 minutes you get hail storms you get rain you get drizzling you get sunshine and it changes every 10 to 15 minutes i'm so surprised so uh, that's the thing and on personal front i am glad that i received my scholarship on time to survive and it's pretty uh, hectic to go out you need digital passes with all verified details to be reported to the russian government if not you are sent to jail unquestioned at any point of time and that's scary i mean like russia jail is next to hell in siberia I, that's that's a, a scary thing that we have developed over time so that's what i said personally i have gained a lot and i have lost over my professional life yet okay that, i think that is one of the best crafted answers that i heard from everyone and uh, uh, i i i don't know but i hope that this part also goes to youtube like the jail part that you said we we can talk about it later so regarding my uh, experience so normally in phd uh, in germany or netherlands it's very flexible so most of the time you uh, like work from home depending on how your supervision team is so in my case it was only 3 days a week i was always going to the office so in that sense those three days are now converted to work from home three more days so it doesn't make that much of a difference the good thing is that i'm healthy and lucky to have a home and i get the salary so i don't have those issues uh, in that sense so i am very happy to hear that each one of you is also like very uh, seeing it as a very positive in a positive way like someone is reading books someone is learning to cook and uh, so it's very good and obviously in my case i am spending more time on youtube which i should reduce otherwise i won't finish my phd on time so uh, we can move to the next point with that uh, so the next point is how has the pandemic affected your country and region so some of you already talked about some of this and you can go into details i can give you some examples so that it can help you to say something about it like how has it affected your country and region so you can talk something about like travel restrictions which i guess everyone has already now and uh, what is the condition of the lockdown whether it is partial or full or are there any public transports or parks open shops open and what is the impact on like economic impact i mean like what is the real economic impact and what is the recovery rate of the people like are people recovering and uh, how is the quarantine and all these things so you can think about it and talk about it slowly so we can start with arka for this point all right off to your so, yeah so to talk about how the country has been impacted and to start with the travel restrictions yeah the whole country is in kind of a lockdown according to the international travels there is no international travels all the borders have been sealed but uh, there has been uh, not much restriction in domestic travels like uh, there was a time in march where like if you are traveling from new york and new jersey or connecticut to florida then you have to be quarantined for 14 days so those kind of things were there implemented for some time but here uh, i think domestic flights are flying as usual uh, not much has been affected though the number of people traveling has been affected because i know a friend who traveled to dallas recently and he said that there are like five people in the flight so there was no issues but still people are trying to avoid all the public places like airport and um, people are driving people are taking out their cars there is no like lockdown lockdown here to be very honest only the non essential services has been uh, closed and the essential service like the grocery and the pharmacy all these are available and that's why people like people are taking out their dogs for walk you cannot stop that so maybe that's also kind of contributes um, because of uh, like contributes to the number of people being affected by the virus and talking about groceries the grocery stores have rules like you have to be 6 feet uh, apart from each other there are like 
like uh, tapes on the ground um, showing that how much distance you should stand uh, and also limited number of people being allowed inside uh, those essential stores but uh, still uh, it cannot be like in india that police is outside and lati charging on people if you are going outside so that cannot be ever implemented here so people who are smart they are staying outside and people who need i mean think that it's just something that's not very important they're lying in hospital beds i must say so these are the things and what are the other things like uh, i know okay so our personal experience i know uh, a friend's colleague uh, sorry a colleague's a friend's dad who actually passed away because of this coronavirus thing and even it's so sad that even for the funeral they had to do a video conferencing only like uh, your personal family is allowed and the whole funeral they had to do like a video conference that's really sad but on the other side i also know a colleague's uncle who showed uh, who got the symptoms he got tested but then uh, by the time he got the results in two days he was fine so there are like there's two aspects of this like people who are actually getting affected and some people who are not so just everyone is trying to be safe and trying to um quarantine themselves like um make sure that you are safe and not getting affected so i i personally i have been here uh, like in self quarantine since one and a half months and the two major issues i have is groceries and laundry new york apartments ap- apparently don't have laundromat so you have to go outside and do your laundry and come back so that's one of the major issues i am facing so i have gone only four times i would say yet it's not only but i had to go cuz i was out of stuff and as everyone i am also cooking <laughs> a lot of things and learning new things so yeah that's these are all the my experience regarding this okay so yeah the cycle continues like eat live live eat eat live so let's move to the next person ashish adhikari from canada um so when you say it affecting the country so right now um it has affected a lot in canada and the main spike of cases has been in uh, the late um, you know late march and mid of march now the now to tell you the amount of cases we have is um, we have around 30000 cases right now um 30000 positive cases in canada out of which 500000 people were tested so there is a good recovery rate and um, and that's why like um, the the lockdown has not been full it's still partial so pe- like people as orka said like people are going out with the cars but um, all the non essential services are shut down right now uh, only the groceries pharmacies and uh, government offices are open for people to help with uh, the other issues they have and um, in if if personally if when i go to a grocery store so the so the restrictions they put is only five people can enter into at each time and you then they they provide a sanitizing spray on our hand and then we um, it's then we use a glove to uh, pick up our, our groceries and then um, even even the cashiers are having good uh, glasses so to even to stop any kind of contact um, so those kind of uh, like measures are being taken and um, and even the police is quite uh, like active here if there is if they see there are parties going on so the i, I would tell you a case happened in uh, in ontario uh, in brampton that they find around six people a group of six people having a having a having a barbecue party at the backyard they find they were heavily fined so government is taking those kind of measures as well to keep the people safe here and uh, we and 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 when you say jobs jobs have been affected like i can tell you a uh, statistics from stats canada government side that over over 10 lakh people have been affected are unemployed right now in canada 
it's it's government statistics 10 lakh people are unemployed in canada Un unemployment rate has reached heights now right now and people are waiting for this um, quarantine period to get over so that people can come back to the jobs so this is the situation right now and when you say public transport public transport is partial like the amount of the frequency of metros is less the amount of buses frequency is, is less parks are closed right now shops not open homeless people government is trying to take care of them and uh, provide so we'll come to the policies uh, which government has done in the later section but this is the situation right now and people are following social distancing here i mean what orca said that if if your street is empty if you want to take your dog for a walk you can you can come and stand for a while a bit outside of your home just not and stay as far away from people as possible like a 6 feet distance all the shops have specific sections for the social distancing so that's how the situation is right now in montreal and montreal has is the most has the most amount of cases right now in canada it has 8000 cases in this alone in this city out of the whole 32000 so it is it is a hot spot so we are being careful as much as we can so yeah that's how it is okay so next we go to sushant from india hi uh, so uh, listening to other countries uh, steps and measures i think india has taken most the toughest decisions and toughest uh, measures and uh, talking about the numbers as of now india has total 14792 infected persons with a recovery rate of 13.6% which accounts for 2014 recovered and 3.2 percent death which is around 488 so uh, i can say the numbers uh, some may, uh, some may argue that numbers are not that high because testing is not done till now uh, testing is not done that much compared to other countries uh, but till now the testing is around 3.4 lakh and the infection positive cases is around 4.3 percent and uh, you can say that like, it has been uh, 25 days of complete lockdown in india and i would say the government here has taken the timely proactive and tough decisions of having this nationwide lockdown probably because the government recognizes its lack of proper health infrastructure to tackle any community transmission and so far india has been able to restrict the community transmission uh, because till now it is only restricted to some clusters and hotspots have been identified. Uh, the travel restriction, I would say there has been no uh, uh, rail transportation or uh, passenger rail or air or any kind of interstate or any kind of domestic travel is allowed as of now. You can, as a person, as an individual, you can only go to the nearest market that to buy walking and to buy the only essential uh, goods only the business activities related to essential items are allowed like essential grocery shops medicine shops those are open and the federal system is actually doing a good job here because in general the central central government is rolling out guidelines but along with that lot of state governments have taken extra precautions and have extra shown extra cautiousness preparedness in implementing those uh, regulations which actually uh, in some cases working very well like in odisha or rajasthan there have been few models like bilwara models those have been developed to tackle the pandemic situation here so if you see uh, like uh, the only uh, the local agencies they have been taking uh, measures like uh, to maintain the social distance in public places for example few local uh, there are a lot of places the market in mondays the time slot has been allotted for vegetable shops and for fruit vendors different time slots and the market are being shifted to open areas more spacious areas like uh, uh, cricket field or playground where people can maintain uh, social distance uh, talking about my observations here in bhubaneswar so bhubaneswar uh, in my 
uh, observation bhubneswar is one of the best performing city as of now uh, because it has managed to restrict the numbers enter odisha the state odisha has managed to restrict the numbers uh, to 60 as of now so there has been no new cases for last 3 days it's fantastic and the preparedness here the government is doing is beyond like beyond imagination you can say uh, here the government has prepared thousands of hospital beds in just two weeks of time just to tackle any surprises that may throw up the pandemic may throw up uh, talking about the behavior from people here i would say in my society where i live in uh, the uh, live in bhubneswar the society committee has taken the measures to implement all the guidelines of the government they have completely banned the entry of outsiders to the society and they have uh, security patrols inside the uh, society is being done to ensure that people are following social distance and here people are acting responsibly and they are alert probably because they are educated and uh, they are well aware of the intensity of the situation uh, but talking about entire india i would say 95% of people are cooperating and are following the guidelines but again there have been reports of cases where people are not cooperating with the law and enforcement agency that's where the law and enforcement agency have to use the force they are misbehaving with the health workers with the frontline workers and yeah that's pretty much about it anything you want to add uh somya ranjan or uh, uh, yeah so we can move to them now only so that it will be better that they can add something which is different or uh, something which is missed or their view in their specific reasons maybe we can go to somya ranjan bhai from uh if he has something to add about india okay so i'll be uh, i'll be speaking about uh, mumbai and maharashtra because uh, i've been staying there so mumbai is the financial capital of india and the capital of maharashtra and it contributes 15% of the gdp of the of the country and uh, this is a particular reason for which we get to see huge influx of migrants in the city, in the city and the state as well the city uh, city's population is about 19 million and uh, it has got a density a density of 32000 people per square kilometer and then we have the asia's largest slum Uh, Dharavi, in which uh, a million people stay in a small area of five square kilometers. So this shows that in the island city, how social distancing is a privilege, and that is a particular region for which Mumbai has uh, got some. Like as of the latest data I have, Mumbai has two thousand one hundred eighty-seven cases. A city has got more than two thousand cases. Maharashtra has got thirty-five. percent of the entire country's number and uh, like infections and in terms of death 40% of the entire death uh, cases in the country are in maharashtra itself so the condition over there is not that good and uh, if i go on to tell about uh, india then as uh, uh, sushant if i'm not wrong has mentioned most of the points that the entire country has been uh, put into a lockdown transportation like air roadways and railways are shut down and uh, but again we get cases like uh, like he has mentioned that uh, there are there are some places where huge congregations have taken place and uh, people are aware but they they are not uh, behaving responsibly but again the number is of them uh, the number of them is really less they have been attacked on medical and security personnel and uh, as uh, it was told that the testing numbers have been less so which is being ramped up and another one important point that i would like to add is that the rampant the rampant spread of fake news in the entire time like people are sitting at home and uh, anything and everything is being posted on whatsapp and people are like accepting it like gita or bible okay it must be there something must be there otherwise how can someone create such a beautiful story and that has also created lots of problem like communalization of the entire pandemic has taken place at places so i think that uh, covers up the rest of the points about india and my place Okay, so then we can move to another person from India, Anurag Behra, if he wants to add something more. Yeah, so uh, I stay in Bangalore, which you can say as the Silicon Valley of India. 
so here generally all the it it companies have their big hubs out here and a uh, lot of a service sector depends on this city basically so because of this pandemic uh, the biggest problem is uh, the spreading of the disease inside the tech parks so because of which the tech parks had to be shut down in some places or certain buildings have have to be shut down in some places now the government has ordered that from april 20 a 33 percentage of the workforce can go to the it parks to work but again we have to see how it pans out now if i talk on a technical point of view means more about india so uh, then there is data available by the brookings there is data available by the brookings institute uh, a very famous economist uh, shamika ravi she gives a statement about indian data saying that like the rate of growth of indian cases to the number of people being tested you see the graph is plateauing and recently i was going through an interview by the chief epidemiologist of the country and he was giving a statement that everyone is complaining that we aren't testing much we aren't testing much we aren't testing much fine the testing has to be increased but in a country like india you can't afford a thing what iceland did you can't go and directly test each and every pop- person of your country so what you can do is you have to first attack that part of the population which is more vulnerable who have those influenza kind syndromes or who have those acute uh, fever or related problems so that's how they are uh, taking the measures so it's a very well calculated stuff and the stock of the medicines or the stock of the pp material or the test kits whatever the country has according to him it can last up to further 5 weeks which is sufficient enough to procure more so if there is no more surprises like the big congregation problem or anything else then they expect that the health infrastructure present out here won't get overwhelmed out of it and rather this culture of working from home has shown everyone one more side in which we can be more efficient being in bangalore we face a big problem of a traffic jam i go to office i take it i take 2 hours to reach office i take 2 hours to come back and again i have to work 8 hours so it's like basically i am wasting 4 hours of my efficiency so if i if not that necessary and i can work from home i am seeing that part of efficiency also where i i need not worry about certain stuffs which is worth ignoring i can't like it's not a compulsory thing to get jammed in a traffic so like that phase is actually teaching the it industry a lot but yes the way uh, ashish uh, ashish uh, bhai told in about canada similarly here employment uh, rate is also in a big trouble because the unemployment among the it professionals has grown by 23% in the recent times after the lockdown because people are laying off at least the support staff to reduce the cost which they spend towards their employees so like technically india is flattening the curve but still if we don't know about the pandemic we might expect any like any surprises from it so let's hope for the best uh yeah i would like to add something more to what he said about unemployment uh, you see uh, india with 1.3 billion of population there are a lot of daily wage laborers and uh, uh, you know migrant workers and the undeclared announcement of lockdown 21 days fast then again 18 days uh, more uh, again uh, 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 in continuation that has actually increased the sufferings of these migrant workers and daily laborers significantly because they do not have work to earn and to get their fam- and to feed their family so in this period though government has taken measures of uh, announcing 1.7 lakh crore package to ensure the food security for the poor but implementation wise uh, getting down to the pyramid and reaching to each and every needy people is difficult in a country like india so there are lot of ngos and lot of uh, uh, individuals are uh, coming uh, are uh, 
taking step forward and to reach out uh, reach out to those uh, needy people and help them as much as possible but in this sector uh, the intervention of government needs to be very much uh, needs to be there because after this lockdown gets over so there will be huge unemployment uh, to tackle uh, for the government and i think the the most uh difficulties will be uh, uh, will uh, be faced by is those migrant and delivery laborers so in this period government should take something uh, should uh, like uh, you know take measures to improve the employment in agriculture and those sectors where the food security can be you know maintained okay thank you for the elaborate discussion because everyone each of you know like india is a huge country so different parts have different policies and it's very difficult for everything to come together and till now whatever we have seen it's also out in like all the news outlets outside india that the actions of india australia and i don't remember there are three or four countries which are the best till now like in terms of strictness and implementation and uh, i mean they implemented quite early so that's why the spread could not reach to that level so let's move to the special um, by special i mean like i had also another friend who said like in sweden they don't have lockdown so that's why i'm going to dibya lochan from sweden so let's hear about him from the ground zero okay uh, so so the situation over here is uh, pretty much different uh, although they have uh, close uh, universities they haven't closed uh, uh, like kindergarten and uh, high schools and everything because they would that would burden the system that they say uh, because uh, the parents would be looking after their kids and everything that's one thing and everything is pretty much open over here but uh, uh, but the thing is that uh, these um, the scandinavian culture is very much different from uh, rest of the world or maybe if i say from an indian perspective it's very much different from india so social distancing has been a thing over here for, for quite some time not due to uh, not uh, not like this <laughs> not due to enforcement and uh, also along with that uh, if uh, the government uh, don't enforce anything strictly over here as as the policy and the mindset over uh that goes over here but they carry out guidelines and uh, um, they trust there's a great amount of trust between the uh, citizens and the government they trust each other so every guideline that is uh, uh, that is put out by the government they are that that are more or less followed i would say so that's one thing uh, the the grocery stores the restaurants everything is open but they have limited uh, that part like Uh, orkova you were saying in new york uh, actually few days uh, back i also went to the grocery store and i saw that there are these lines and there are like six foot or something like that there's a you know, difference there's a gap and you stand over over there uh, the public transport sl that is the uh, pendel talk or the train and uh, buses everything they are running fine but the number of people transfer like uh the number of people uh, those are uh, taking the service has gone drastically down it uh, some days back i was uh, reading this report that it was fi- like at least 50% down the number of passengers in asil uh, which is the service provider over here in stockholm that's one thing they are cleaning each and everything that's the another thing and uh, yeah coming to uh, economy uh, it has uh, it has definitely affected the economy uh, no doubt about that um, because uh, there were uh, some of my friends who were uh, supposed to go for summer jobs now summer jobs are out of the scene and uh, scania and astra and big uh, manufacturing uh, companies they are facing some problem uh, last period i am um, some of my friends they had a uh, project at scania because because of the covid situation they aren't allowing uh, anyone to come and collect data and everything now that's one thing and uh, yeah the manufacturing industry is uh, is it's a, a bit uh, hard it but uh, another thing uh, along with the swedish government and uh, and the uh, 
like Asis Bhai also said in Germany, and there is the social security. So I was just speaking to a friend of mine, like a couple of days back, and uh, anyone who is employed with more than three months of work, uh, like work right now, who has worked in a company for more than three months, is the Swedish government policy that they would work for 60% of the time and would get 94% of the salary. So that's that's a rule, and they are checking how much time you are spending on on the work right now. That's that's how it is, and yeah, um, parks and everything are pretty much open, but uh, it's nice uh, spring time, and it's <laughs> but it's a bit odd to not go out and go out in spring uh, at least for me yeah like because sweden is so spectacular in spring and summer it's it's the best <laughs> uh, yeah, i would what... agree to you man like <laughs> in canada it's right now we're touching <laughs> spring and our summer is ruined like we have six months of summer, yeah and winter and so, now yes. it's gone and i was looking forward to the summer and now it's ruined it's gone so we'll Again, when I think this lockdown will get over again in winter, I suppose, and then it's back to square one. <laughs> <laughs> again, it's a minus thirty degree. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's one thing. Yeah, but but not meeting friends. That's that's one thing we do. Uh, uh, although we do video call and everything, but yeah, meeting with friends is another thing. You can't go to our pub and party also. <laughs> <laughs> that that's my two bits or two cents. I would say. uh anything more uh, i don't know yeah thank you okay uh, yeah i can totally relate to that because in uh, netherlands also it's always like the climate in netherlands and uk it's always like rainy and uh, uh, like drizzling but recently for the last month i think we had 20 days complete sun which was very surprising in my last 5 years stay in netherlands and luckily i say this to many people like we have a they call it like a intelligent lockdown it's somewhat like a partial lockdown so the schools and uh, shops and uh, like the restaurants and everything is closed but i see a lot of people going out like some are going in groups of uh, i mean according to the rules they should not go out more than two people and they should maintain a social distance of uh, like two hands which can be in feet or meter whatever you can tell so it's i mean it is followed in some municipalities because if you imagine netherlands it's very small so it's like almost like less than half of the size of odisha that's a state in india or maybe one third of odisha that's the size of netherlands so in that way maybe it is easier for them to implement the policy but still people don't want to like being stuck at home so i see a lot of people even though there is social distancing but i don't see that on the streets so people are going in groups for bike racing or maybe like uh, here bike is like very bike by bike i mean bicycle which is very popular in netherlands so you will see a lot of people doing all these things in some municipalities they impose fines which are like 150 euros which is really high just to make you scared to but still i don't see that as strictly as implemented because uh, the place where i am staying luckily has less houses so in my place it's kind of like a social distancing between the houses where i'm staying it's like in a remote location with more forest and animals as compared to houses so i don't feel that much scared i go out sometimes because i i mean in the nature it's not i don't see a single person whenever i go out in those areas like not on the streets so in that way it is okay but uh, i think like uh, i mean for groceries i i am really afraid to go to a grocery store even though you have all the gloves and everything so i just ordered it online and luckily online i find some slots somehow to get it delivered at my home and then the big task is like how do you clean it like there are a lot of this fake news and uh, uh i mean there was also a video by us doctor uh, i don't know how because at that time people followed it blindly like you should wash the vegetables with soap which was really really strange for me so uh, i mean i'm scared but not that to that level so i just wash it with warm water and just put it in the refrigerator and obviously as the research says it's 72 hours for uh, like the i mean the plastic and uh, 
uh, also maybe food items. So that is not that much of a, but the good thing is that if I go to a grocery store, I have two factors of fear, like the object and the person. So if I can minimize that by online, then I have only one object of, that is only the object, not the person. So in that way, it is good. And regarding economy impact, again, Netherlands is a very small country. So they are giving some packages, like in our municipality, people who have small startups or small shops, they are getting like, uh, there was like a Facebook page and a uh, lot of awareness programs. And by the help of that, they are giving something like 1,000, I think it was like 1,500 to 2,000 euros, something like that within that range per month. Uh, you'll get for two months or something like that. And by June, they will assess the situation again. So every two weeks or one month, they do this re-evaluation like, uh, till how long we'll have all these things closed, like the restaurants and other things. So, I mean, I would say as much as possible, avoid crowded places, stay positive. I always say that. And uh, yeah, so that's what we have in Netherlands. Not much difference. Only bad thing is that I don't know how many of you know that tulips are very famous in uh, uh, Netherlands and all from all over the world in the months of March and April. They have this famous tulip show uh, in Kuchenhof. If you type in Google, you'll find it. It's really world famous and people come from really different places and it's really crowded. So last year, my parents were there in April and they visited that. And this year, there was a sad video. I also don't know if that video is true because now WhatsApp is like, you have more Corona in the living room than uh, via WhatsApp than the real pandemic itself. So... Uh, the tulips were destroyed. So there was a video that these tulips, because there was no tulip show for this year, because of the, it happens every year. I think after World War or something, they said, like, this is the first time that this tulip show was canceled. I mean, everything is canceled now, the Wimbledon and everything is canceled. So in a way, it's like, uh, it's sad to see that video that they are destroying all these tulips and uh, because they cannot have it and they're having this virtual tulip show now. To, so that you sit at your home and enjoy some videos of the tulips, which is obviously not that fascinating and you don't get that feeling. But anyways, it's okay. Uh, it's already getting long. So let's move to the next person. Uh, we have Ashish from Germany. We have good news coming out from Germany. Germany has been doing well. So from the onset of last week, I think the number of uh, COVID infections has consistently declined. And as we speak, uh, Germany is currently doing at around about uh, 140k confirmed COVID-19 infections, out of which 86,000 people are 100% recovered, which is a staggering figure by any standards. And uh, even among the active cases, the amount of criticality or the number of critical cases is really low. But uh, last but not the least, the most important factor is the mortality rate. The mortality rate in Germany is less than 3% which is yeah, that was really just amazing, surprising, yeah? like... which is just amazing if you compare to other European countries and Germany as it is, we know it's uh, among the epicenter of the, um, the COVID outbreak in Europe. So uh, less than 3% of mortality rate, great thumbs up any day. But uh, yeah, so uh, as far as the economy is concerned, goes without saying that uh, the economy has gone for a complete toss. Uh, I mean, I just read a recent article from International Monetary Fund that they have estimated that there would be a 3% decline uh, in the world GDP this year as in compared to last year. And it's interesting to note that the same IMF had estimated that there would be a 3% spike in January. So it's very interesting to see how things could uh, completely change and go for a toss in a couple of months. But that's the way it is. And, um, and German economy is heavily... Uh, dependent on automotive industry and the automotive industry as it is wasn't doing very well from the from the beginning of 2019 and now with this uh, pandemic it's just cherry on the cake nobody wants to buy a car now so and due to that the OEMs the manufacturers they have stopped uh, manufacturing cars and the suppliers they have stopped supplying and uh, that is why the bigger companies are finding it difficult to draw in revenue and the smaller companies are finding it difficult to pay out salaries. So bigger companies are trying to pull out money from R&D and putting it down into a normal functioning of the companies. They are slashing down contracts from 40-hour work weeks to 24-hour work weeks. So that's the situation. But in my limited understanding, uh, 
the scenario, the pandemic has two aspects. The first aspect is you you make sure that the affected, the infected don't infect further. And the second aspect is make sure that the infected don't die. And I think uh, Germany has been really, really successful in uh, in curbing out the curve and flattening the curve and uh, making sure that the things are under control. That's what I would say. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, in, I mean, in uh, Netherlands also, the infection is not that. I mean, considering the countryside, it is really high. It's like thirty-one thousand or something like that. But uh, the death rate is also really high. That's why I was surprised when yeah. I saw the death rate of Germany, which was really good. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, but the most. Not... Yeah, I think the most Germany encouraging... is also also uh, Germany is also the country doing the highest number of testing. Testing, that's yeah. Correct. That's correct. So currently, as we speak, Germany has made a rough, roughly around two million tests, but US has made more tests. US has done roughly four million tests, but the number of tests per unit of population per thousand people, let's say, it's the highest in Germany. And also the number of hospital beds that Germany has to offer per thousand people, even if if not the topmost, but at least it's among the top five, which is why I think the medical infrastructure is very robust. The bandwidth is huge. And I think last uh, week they have also, I mean, last month they have started taking in critical cases from, uh, I mean, patients who are really critical from France, Spain and Italy, and then bringing them over to Germany and giving them the best care possible. Initially, yeah. the test kits were actually uh, taken from Germany uh, yeah. in the United States. So they were yeah. the one who were only producing. Correct. So that's a scenario. So good news from here, from the center of Europe. Okay. Uh, so let's go to Madan from France. Yes. Yes. Yeah. One of Are the top to... five countries, right, Madan? Yes. Yes. Uh, so it's like if you see in the scenario, right now the Europe is the hard hit, and we have five countries already: Italy, Spain. France, Netherlands, Germany, and uh, unfortunately in France we have number of deaths exceeding 17,000, maybe it's more, I just checked it uh, last night, but maybe it has increased today, And uh, but one of the positive news coming in is that uh, the number of deaths per day is decreasing right now, so they say the lockdown is bearing some fruit uh, regarding this. So if we talk about what has happened uh, in this couple of months because of the pandemic is uh, the first and the foremost is that uh, they have closed the boundaries. So the boundaries of France is closed. The international boundaries of France is closed. So there is no transport or no movement of uh, person whatsoever uh, between any two countries uh, neighboring uh, France or maybe any other European countries uh, in particular and uh, regarding the travel restrictions uh, so we don't have any travel as i said before that we don't have any travel between the cities within france itself and uh, regarding the public transport we still have public transport running but the frequency is really less uh, and we have the buses we don't have metros in my uh, in my city but uh, the metros like in paris or in southern part of france like in strasbourg they have the metros running, but in a very uh, low frequency, very less frequency, I would say. And uh, almost everything is closed. All the non-essential services like the bars, pubs, any uh, like sports equipment, uh, shops, um, any other shops like clothing uh, and other accessories have been closed down. Only the essential things like the pharmacy. Uh, the medical stores and uh, the grocery stores are open. Uh, we have the similar policies, like uh, I, I, I guess everywhere now we have the social distancing at the grocery stores. We have these boxes been painted like one meter or more distance in order to maintain the social distancing thing. Uh, it is uh, it has been maintained here as well in France. Moreover, I see like particularly the supermarket I visit. I normally visit once in a week just to buy the necessary items that I would need. And that in that particular supermarket, I find that uh, the people who do the billing, the people who just do the bills for you uh, are wearing the face masks and their entire cash counter has been covered with uh, 
maybe card boss or something in order to separate you out separate the customers out from direct contact with the cashier or the one who is making you uh, printing you the bills so this is how they are maintaining uh, maintaining the precautions so they are doing this the next thing the regarding the policy we have for the public is that uh, the french government has uh, issued a form uh, it's a it's a very simple form where you have to write down your name uh, your address date of birth and uh, purpose of leaving your apartment uh, and at what time did you leave your apartment so this is basically you have to carry with you when you are outside of your home just to just when been asked by the police by the local police you have to show them so that they know that when did you leave your apartment and where you are heading to so it's just to keep on record and if you are found without that form then you have been heavily fined which is which amounts to 140 euros round about which is really huge it started with 65 euros in the first week of uh, lockdown and now it has raised, uh, reached to 140 euros and and i see there are people who don't uh, don't obey this there is always a certain chunk of people who don't uh, obey this kind of laws but a large population large part of the population are obeying this if i see if i want to uh, pictureize the situation right now then we have the southern part of france been hard hit uh, uh, yesterday i was talking to one of my uh, friends who is doing phd in strasbourg and he was saying uh, it's really difficult because for them there is no no facilities uh, uh, like he is living in a student dormitory and he has some problems with his kitchen and there is no person coming in to fix it while this is not the case in my city where i have been i have been informed that if we have any essential breakdowns like if your stove is not working or maybe your geyser is not working you are not able to get hot water or something there will be a person who will come in and help in fixing it but if there is let's say there is uh, there is some damage with your furniture or with your anything which is not that essential and you can wait until the lockdown is called off then in that case they will not fix it but i did, uh, but he said he didn't find such facilities in the southern part of france where it is very hard hit and which is uh, which is very normal because the southern part of france has been attached to spain and you also see the situation in spain is really really uh, deteriorating every day but uh, we are all hoping for the best let's see what happens and yes regarding the universities and all the educational institutes everything has been closed down all the offices has been closed down everything has moved to work from home and uh, people are taking the especially the professors are taking the online classes uh, and uh, yes and they have online tests and i have a little insight about what is happening in belgium as well because part of my phd is in belgium so i know i get some information from my professors so he said that uh, as of now it has been declared by the government that uh, this year they will not open any educational institute so everything is happening uh, everything is happening online all the exams and everything and they are planning to open the universities and other educational in- institutes only next year so this is this is all the information i have thank you okay now we go to russia yasit the next situation here in russia uh, i would divide it in uh, into two sections uh, because the russian government has taken precautionary measures it's been little over one month the first case has been registered in russia i guess it's like april 20th and since then in uh, russia has witnessed over 37000 cases and 300 over 370 uh, some deaths and the city that i am currently residing in moscow is the epicenter of uh, the pandemic which accounts to one third of the uh, uh, infected population it's over 12000 as of now uh, i would say there are two uh, ways of the policy governing uh, that way russia has defined it uh, in the early days it was not that serious you can it was partially locked down you were restricted to go into metro without any proper cause or to go to uh, go for any uh, not unessential services since uh, two weeks it's completely under lockdown 
and the russian government has asked us to register ourselves in the official website of moscow defining your organization your background and intent to move out moreover you are restricted uh, to 100 meters of uh, your surrounding if you have a pet and you need to make a walk uh, across the uh, like uh, lane but apart from that you cannot move out more than 150 or 200 meters unless until you are about to go to any grocery shop and that's to restrict it for two times medical visits are uh, unlimited but you have to make a pass grocery visits are restricted to twice per week and if uh, you are above 60 plus in the uh, in your age then you are required to call up the helpline number and they will help you in getting the groceries and essential stuff so that's a pretty good measure secondly i would say indian embassy here is doing an excellent job we had number of uh video conferences the russia uh, indian students in russia and indian embassy they are providing us with medical kits basically the mask sanitizers and hand wash so that's a brilliant step by the indian embassy and uh, uh, external ministry of india i would say uh secondly russia uh, the, speaking of my university everything has been changed overnight the curriculum has been modified for online basis the exams the tests have been modified as a number of guys here presented the supermarkets uh, regarding the grocery shopping yes uh, we can visit outside but there uh, in a city there is always a two section one with the well to do section of the society and other is uh, the working class or the below average section so the small shops are advised to shut it down rather the big chains are advised to take their products and sell it to people on an online mode so that will help to boost the economy and we all know there is the oil war between russia and saudi for quite a few time and that deteriorated the economy for that reason uh, our president here vladimir putin has announced a uh, paid leave for this month april but it seems it's going to change for the next month and there are some services which are Uh, bound to open and people are advised to go out but on a restricted mode for example i just uh, heard of some news coming from germany they are opening the economy on a shifted basis like some sectors for the for few days and the other sector for other few days and that's what russia is trying to adopt and essential services maybe production or it for half of the month and other things for the half of the month so i would say it's pretty much balanced and good news coming is that russia is has developed a quick testing kit for this uh, pandemic and secondly it's verge of uh, human trials of the new vaccine against this uh, virus so if this is true then we can expect it uh, to come around to the public by july first week as per the reports and that's all it's pretty good here you see all check check marks you see police officers everywhere uh, maintaining your distance so that's pretty good here yeah good to hear that the indian embassy is doing so much uh, things like i mean we also have this uh, in netherlands i think uh, i mean they are trying to also bring in many people which happened before the lockdown like who are stranded abroad and apart from that in netherlands they were also having this student association where they have this uh, discussion with the ambassador or something like that but i did not hear anyone distributing about Uh, face mask or something that would have been even great but anyways uh, let's move to the yeah so we talked about the government policy specifically we can talk about these things because we already talked about some government policy so like uh, for example like uh, what are the policies they are doing to counter this uh, pandemic so for example uh like apart from the restriction lockdown and other things uh like is there any uh, i mean what you hear about the vaccine and antibody research and i don't know how many of you know this term herd immunity i can talk about it because this was whatever i know this was started in netherlands and uk that's what i've heard because they are crazy people and uh, i will talk about it and then you can uh, if you have not heard it you can understand Uh, herd immunity vaccine and antibody research and uh, about the pro, about the encouraging people to wear masks so these are the things related to policy we are going to talk about and then you can combine it with what is the public behavior like are people scared of if you are in a mar supermarket and you start coughing are people like 
uh, suddenly looking at you or going away or uh, like looking at you strange in a strange manner or do you feel anything like any kind of uh, strange attitude or discrimination or something like that so maybe i will just talk briefly about netherlands and then we can go to the start with orca so the herd immunity that is like uh, in simple words it's like uh, so you allow people to get infected so that almost like 60 to 70 percent two third of the people in the in that region get infected then what happens is that they have the antibodies and the assumption is that uh, then infection cannot spread at that rate after two third of people are infected and they will protect the other one third people and uh, it will be very nice like it's like a very i i mean in short you can say like it's assumption based on false beliefs like uh, it's very strange so they had this during a press conference in the beginning, like in Netherlands. I think in UK it was initiated before Netherlands. I'm not sure about that. So people were very much critical of that in Twitter and other social media. And here, normally they hear those opinions. So they cut it out of the official transcript because even the experts recommended that it's not a wise move to have herd immunity, go towards the herd immunity approach, like knowingly infecting people. And uh, government was also afraid like in 2021 when there will be another election because in Netherlands it's like very small country. So you have multiple coalitions and uh, they are dependent on many other parties for a prime minister. He is dependent on many other parties. So they cannot enforce or impose their policies by themselves, their views. So they have to follow certain uh, other people also. So that is herd immunity and regarding masks, it is very strange till now they are saying don't wear masks. So that is one of the most surprising thing that I hear till now. I uh, Till now I work out whenever I don't use, but I was thinking I'll use my handkerchief by folding it to two uh, because now you cannot even find mask online or anywhere. Uh, it's not about cost, it's almost zero. And uh, even Dutch people are criticizing now about the mask thing. Like, why are you not enforcing this? But they are like, uh, it's like they don't want people to wear masks. They are saying it will cause shortage in healthcare, which is completely stupid. I don't know. Like, uh, it's very strange. So we can start with Arka. Uh, yeah. Regarding the people attitude, yeah, I missed one thing. So people attitude is like. I mean, here people, I feel like they are not at all afraid. They think like just uh, enjoying your time and most people think, I mean, the main problem is even if you are not afraid, because recently there was a research that uh, I don't know how they come to that number, that half of the half million people in Netherlands, Netherlands population is 17 million and half million people have already the antibodies. So just like Iceland example, they are saying that uh, it's, true in many parts that almost 80 percent of the people have already got the coronavirus but they have never felt any symptom and they have recovered it so they have the antibody but that the, the problem is like when people have this carefree attitude you can be like a uh, like a silent uh, carrier so nothing is going to happen to you like if you are really healthy and all other things you satisfy and but you will pass it on to like the exponential thing which you hear in many areas like thousand hundred ten thousand so yeah we can go to Arka because it's getting longer yeah yeah so the government is actually in tatters I would say because of the numbers because right now I read that the total is like 715,000 people in USA total and in New York is itself is like 233,000 people already affected. And these numbers are the main reason that the government has gone crazy and is trying to implement different ways to make th bring back things to normal. Like the economy, the economy has been affected like crazy. The Dow Jones has, the industrial average has gone down by 30% and uh, the Wall Street is like falling apart and people have lost 10 years of their savings, I've heard. So or to try to counteract, like uh, the president has like injected two point two trillion dollars in the economy. That's like a huge amount, if you can sorry, imagine. Sorry to interrupt, but America is a twenty one trillion dollar economy, and see the president has the the package of two point one trillion dollar economy, and India's GDP is two point seven trillion dollar. Just imagine yeah, yeah. 
the the the, the kind of <laughs> economy that is. So what, imagine what would happen in India if something exactly. goes south. Yeah, sorry, Sushant. I, I agree to, to that. Go for the sorry to interrupt. Sushant has to go for dinner. So uh, thank you, Sushant, okay. for joining. If you are hearing this at the recording later. Okay. So, is Sushant? Did he? Is he here? Is he saying something? Okay. Oh, he already left. Okay. Already left. Was, yeah. yeah. So that's what I was saying. That these these uh, some measures like uh, in New York specifically. Uh, the governor, Andrew Cuomo, he's trying his best. He got uh, the Navy ship a comfort for making it as a patient. The Javits Center, it's converted into like a 2,000 bed uh, total hospital. Even our friend uh, Anurag, uh, he's studying in Stony Brooks. He has been moved away from his dorm and he's, uh, he has been given alternate housing. And the dorm has been converted into hospital. The uh, US Open Stadium near uh, my place here, uh, it has been converted into a relief center where they're preparing food and everything for a hospital nearby in Elmas. So the government is like from the central government to the state government. Everyone is trying their best to help support the aid, um, aid the people who has been affected by this pandemic and try to reduce the curve. So uh, that's like these are the things like there. I can d dive into the details of so many things that are happening, like into the job conditions, like so many people have lost their jobs here. And like, uh, I'll give you an example, a company like Groupon. Uh, if you don't know about Groupon, it's a company who gives coupons for um, uh, uh, everything you do, like restaurants or any deals. They, like 2,100 people became jobless in a day, which is kind of like the 45% of the company's employ uh, total number of employees they have. So some sectors have been really affected and those uh, like people are trying to help them but some things uh, you just cannot help so it's been really uh, very they, i mean difficult time for everyone i would say do they do they receive non employment benefits or some kind of relief packages something like that that's that's just for one month one just month for one month yes Okay. For example, in Germany, the thing is, uh, when the company goes bankrupt or can't pay the employee's salary, they, instead of just saving the inner circle, they also try to put efforts in saving the outer circle as well. So what they do is the entire company goes and registers itself at the state and says, hey, I'm out of cash, so I can't pay my employee salaries, but I still want them to be on my payroll, which is why please take care of my employees. So what the government does is it pays you 60% of your take home. So, for example, if you're working 40 hour work weeks and the company says, OK, I can pay you for for three days, let's say, and your contract goes down to 24 hours. So you get 24 hour uh, of compensation from the company and 60 percent of the net salary that you have from the rest two days comes from the state. That's how it works. But I don't know how it is in the US. The I thing is that that there is no government rule regarding this. You uh, people mostly work at will. And especially for uh, people who are on a visa, like the worker visa, H-1B visa, it's even yeah. more sorry condition for them. You have 60 days to get mm -hmm. a new job. If you don't get, you have to go back to your country. And you cannot That's... go back to your country too because international travels are banned. So you, I don't know yeah. what the repercussions are of that situation. We haven't faced that yet. But the thing is that here, the work conditions, most of the jobs are at will. So even they can pay you no severance and they have to say that, hey, you cannot work from tomorrow. That's it. We are sorry about it. So this can happen here. That's how it works, I would say. And, okay. and when I say about Canada right now, so the, uh, just the situation about what um, Ashish was um, like saying, what, what is the, actually the government doing when, because there are a lot of small businesses here in Canada which are getting affected. And how is the government doing, what is the government actually trying to support them? So they have like they have like uh, have two policies here one is like a canada emergency response benefit pro program which suppose if a student or uh, uh, someone is working is out of job right now because of the covid situation or has has issues right now so what the what what the citizen citizen or the any any student or needs to do they need to register in service canada and Canadian government will send them $500 every week for the next 16 weeks right now. So we have four months of 2000 per month pay payment to each of those people who are who have earned. So these are specific conditions who have earned 
or more in the last year 2019 the fresh entries of peer students who are like on two in that would have come on 2020 they are not eligible for that and the people who have lost jobs because of covid-19 if they have paid taxes and are and are issued to employment insurance they will receive uh, like um, the canada government will try to support them till they don't get a job like a 60% or 70% of their salary so that's what they are doing right now to support even even the small businesses have uh, wage subsidies uh, like on like 75% of wage subsidies so that they can support people and keep the people people in payroll because and most of the student population who are doing like uh, part time jobs they don't have money right now so that's where the crb has come into effect and it's really helping and i have a lot of student friends here and they are actually benefiting from it and right think, now they're working yeah. on new policies where if no one is earning and if he is a student and is facing issues to pay rents even the the rent payments have been like uh, relaxed right now in canada that if you don't pay rent that's fine even credit card billings and those kind of stuff so quite a bit of financial relaxation even for me as a developer like i was working for my client bank had to introduce new products for loans now canada is giving new loans without interest to small business so that they can support them so we kind of did our work as um as developers as also to to have the bank um, have those products set up in in the in the in the banking system so those kind of things uh, the government is doing and the testing centers have been uh, like uh, really really improved and there are a lot of beds right now still it has not reached the peak in terms of healthcare so and the curve is kind of like not flattening but it's going to flatten that that's what the premier and the prime minister is telling that you to keep the social distancing so that the curve is will flatten soon so that's how it is right now but based on policies and the financially canada government is doing, doing really well in terms of supporting the businesses and the people yeah Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have. I'm curious uh, to know from Ashish Bhai. As yes. you mentioned, like uh, US is doing. If I'm not wrong, sorry. Uh, I, my question is to Ashish Bhai, I guess. So, uh, if uh, US government is doing so much precaution, I read a few bulletins today, which state Trump has stated his resistance against the governors who are supporting uh, isolation or quarantine or lockdown. And second thing is. Uh, about the uh, economy uh, he is too worried and he is insisting upon reopening the economy from the next week so how do you like to address this issue is is this a comes question for me from canada or or uh, i think i think it's sorry, a question guess, for uh, me so yeah, uh, yes so there has been recently a difference that trump has said that no i cannot control uh, and uh, he has uh, said that the state government everyone every state because every state it's a different situation so every state the governors would take control and it's on them that if they are allowing for for the opening of non essential services like texas has opened uh, non essential services but uh, some states that has been affected most like new york and connecticut new jersey they cannot do it they are rather saying that they are asking for more help from the center and uh, if you see the um, speech of uh, andy cuomo yesterday what he said that uh, the the situation the curve is going down like last week had the most number of deaths i would say but this week uh, it was equally bad it was not not that we are uh, like increasing the number of deaths are increasing but still the situation is not that good so there is a difference between the center and the state now that each state governor is taking charge it depends on them what they're doing it's absolutely the policies they want and how they want to protect the people of the state uh, second sec- just second point uh, today i just also read about the h1b visa extension the inland home security department has announced there will be an automatic renewal of the h1b visa for the next 240 days that's uh, for uh, like up to november december i guess so yes. is it like is it automatic or the companies need to renew the applications on a fresh basis okay i i don't know the details of this i know that there was a petition filed for this but i don't know that it passed and if it passed that what are the conditions uh, regarding the renewal but usually the employees have to do like anything related to visa it's not me applying it's my uh, employer who is applying my visa so i think they have to take care of that 
don't get into h1 b yeah. at all that's a whole new topic altogether <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole mess no problem. even it's a whole mess. even 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 for canada that's the thing like for the for the immigration like now even for me my work permit ends this year uh, by the end of this year and right now they have stopped all renewals of new applications right now so we have not got any information regarding what is going to happen and and all the existing applications were applied for pr they have been uh, like already been processed and um, that's what so right now we are waiting for any update from our employment as well employer as well so on what to do exactly on this one by the way i just got my pr last week so i am now oh, a permanent so, resident awesome. here yeah. Yeah. I, i was supposed to apply this year but everything is stopped right now so yeah. fingers crossed <laughs> hopefully you will yeah just to add one more thing uh, about uh, the people how they are reacting and their relations so there is people have have been a bit xenophobic in here in new york like uh, like people for who are for having an asian background people are like uh, being weird like we have news of people beating someone up and uh, because they're asian and they cough and someone they were wearing a mask and someone who was not wearing a mask so these kind of situation i i think that happens and um, that's it. it it's 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 a bit xenophobic situation i would say okay we can go to somir ranjan bhai from india uh so uh, in terms of government uh, giving uh, some sort of monetary help to am i audible yes yeah uh, in terms of uh, government giving some monetary help to the needy we have this pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana where recently in the first lockdown period some 4.0 4.07 crore women have been given 500 rupees each uh, but again uh, looking to the size of the population that we have it's more than 137 crore uh, the basic uh, problem that uh, even the government is facing today is regarding the uh, people have that people enough people don't have their bank accounts so if someone doesn't have a bank account how will the benefit reach them so that is a major problem that is faced in today's date <clears throat> uh, i can narrate uh, one of the things like uh, my sister is presently studying in xim uh, uh, bhuneshwar and uh, she had uh, her uh, she got an internship uh, in a company in gurgaon so she was like promised some 50000 rupees for uh, her internship for two days but uh, recently she got a call that uh, if you want to have an internship which is very essential to get a placement at the end of two years she was told that if you uh, want to have an internship internship then it has to be of free we won't be paying anything from our side so basically uh, the interns are not getting anything and it's not just her the entire batch most of them are facing this problem so the small uh, startups they are not paying anything and uh, people are like forced to work for free for them and uh, apart from it there is a sense of fear amongst the people uh, like and there are some people and 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 very interestingly over here i see that people are uh, people fear uh, quarantine more than uh, corona that is a general sense that if someone is being uh, like uh, put into quarantine that is a bigger fear like what would happen over there people don't have an idea i have seen people popping in paracetamol because they have high temperature when they took a flight they took paracetamol just to reduce the temperature so that when they have this checking at the airports for temperature okay and their temperature would come down so these are things that i have seen that people are doing so people there is a sense of fear and then apart from it i can say uh, uh, tell you one thing regarding my village minority place where outsiders are not allowed now like anyone from like if suppose today i go uh, uh, to my village i am not allowed they have put in fences on the road the entire village has been uh, circled with fence and no one outsider is allowed inside the village so this is a thing and then apart from it the last point i would like to add is that regarding the fake news of uh, treatments like if you eat seven tulsi leaves a day uh, and uh, and if you have a hard summer like if you have a very high temperature summer then this uh, pandemic may go away all these things are making circles even today so lack of mis uh, one issue is misinformation and the other issue is regarding the population size that we have or the basic problems we have today that is from my side thank you okay anurag do you want to add anything to that in india yeah 
uh, the basic things what we had to discuss included about the herd immunity and the uh, research and testing kits etc so like uh, basically speaking here we are devising a new tech it's not a new technique but like we are employing a new technique called as a rapid antibody test so that rapid ant antibody test is a first generation test so it can't be used for a diagnostic purpose but it can be used in the locations where you don't see cases coming at all so in case of a pool testing or a, or to test a huge mass just to keep on rejecting a big mass of people to say that they are not affected so this can this is being employed to make it faster which is actually a catalyst in implementation of the bilwada model what they say in which you divide the whole country into three zones the hot spot the red zones where you have a bigger cluster of people being affected then you have orange zone where you have a middle level of infection but not that much and you have another another green zone where you don't have an infection at all and now we have also employed the technique of pool testing in which we are collecting the samples from each and every one from a locality where you don't see any case coming up and then you test that sample up so this is what another technique what indians are working on even the national institute of virology is trying to work on certain drugs not the vaccines but the drug so uh, they are trying tests with different things definitely hydroxychloroquine which has made a buzz internationally now so is one of them but there are few other drugs which our research personnel don't want to disclose because again people will run to the pharmaceutical shops and try to stock it up which was the issue recently with the hydroxychloroquine and the paracetamol but yeah researches are going on and also researches are going on in terms of the bcg vaccine because there is a kind of a correlation between the countries who have a universal bcg vaccination compulsion and the cases number of cases coming less you can see you go to portugal and you go to spain and you see the contrast you go to iran you say they have the they have a bcg vaccination compulsory but still they have so many cases but they started the bcg vaccination in 1984 so the older generation doesn't have that but still bcg vaccination if you come to the real science is 15% efficient to control tuberculosis so you can't take it to be the exact concrete solution or a or a concrete material to do a research upon a virus upon the covid-19 virus but still there are there are researches going on uh, by taking the protein of the covid-19 and they are doing certain uh, computer simulations and stuff to get it done in terms of like in terms of finding out how it binds to it so that's about the research is going on and again talking about some certain statistics india is definitely slowing it down because now the num the time taken by the cases to double up which was earlier 4 days to double up now it went to 7 from 7 it has now jumped to 8 so it's definitely good means not good news but at least absence of bad news what you can say so that's from my side okay so i guess we have to break down this video into five six videos this is like going going into a very healthy discussion so we also have antibody research in uh, netherlands which is on a very small scale now they you can volunteer anyone can volunteer for that and they have been successful for a uh, few patients in erasmus rotterdam Uh, so i don't know the only problem is about the scalability like how scalable it can be and how much time it will take so i mean whatever i know i am not expert in medical field but whatever i know uh, any country going in the antibody direction will be much better than going in the vaccine direction that's what i understand because virus always mutates and uh, that's my limited understanding so let's go to dibya lochan meher from sweden Okay. Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, the thing is that uh, uh, there's no herd immunity as such. I would say, or I would not like to coin the term herd immunity over here, because uh, as far as my experience with the Swedish government or the uh, people over here, it goes. is that everything is uh, specifically 
modeled and they, those are uh, everything is scientifically based and there's like i was saying uh, before also there's a great deal of trust among the government in the citizen so there's no uh, no like that uh, the government is not listening or anything they they the citizens really trust their government and it's it is likely so that the uh, any decision that they take are for the benefit of the country and the population as a whole not for individual also though so um uh, there i would agree to some of the steps that the government has taken uh, it would like the uh, there's no knee jerk reaction over here although they are tightening the uh, regulations day by day um, um apart from that uh, we actually had uh, maybe this will not come up in the youtube video but we actually had quite a uh, quite few lectures with uh, uh, stockholms uh, in uh, sci stockholm uh, environment institute but they were really speaking about uh, uh, how the uh, strategy and how to how do they develop and uh, make their models that's why i i have really a firm belief on the swedish model to say because they really uh, um, optimize their uh, chances of success and i can see how the government runs over here they say very scientific basis to every decision that they make and some of the things that uh, uh, anurag was also saying um, uh, uh, i kind of uh, i also saw the video that uh, that the chief chief, uh, chief epidemi- epidemiologist of india was saying yeah he was going through and i'm really happy to see that those kind of measures are also taken in india it's it's really hard working to see that yeah it's everything is going scientifically and there's nothing pseudo science or something and uh, but uh, as all of us as uh, experienced i guess we do get a lot of uh, pseudo science forwards right now from, from what's it uh, which is kind of uh, which is kind of tough to deal with and to make people understand that oh uh, okay I'll, i'll i'll drink hot water i'll take those ginger and tulsi and everything but i don't know how much that's going to help me that that's my two cents yeah on this part okay uh yeah so let's go to ashis from germany i forgot the question what was the question again uh regarding the government policy like on the antibody to counter the pandemic so like uh, maybe like masks or uh, something like the vaccine antibody research or uh, and what is the attitude of the people in your surrounding like well i have limited knowledge on this on exact what exactly the government is doing as far as uh, creating uh, and uh, medicines and uh, cure is concerned but what i can say is there is no curfew at the moment in germany so you can still technically go outside do whatever the heck you want to do and still not get convicted and get penalized so it's just plain guidelines and some set of rules and regulations which has been uh, set outlined by the government and people here are just uh, sensible enough to obey them and that's about it okay uh, so let's go to yoshit from russia Okay. Uh, social distancing has been following here very strictly. Also, like there is always a majority section of the guys who feel muscular enough to fight fight against this coronavirus. Uh, that's very uh, bizarre because uh, the initial days when Russia declared lockdown, I could see like I personally stay in a place which is an international uh, stadium or, or is a pra- playground I would say where. often the olympic practice are carried out and this place has been provided by my university so it's a lot of greenery and i could see like people old age ladies with uh, the babies uh, on you know the walker are uh, all around so it's pretty strange why why people think so that they can fight against this corona and yes it's uh, but these days it's been followed strictly there has been police patrolling it's pretty good there are restrictions over purchasing of groceries in order to maintain stocks 
and keep the prices below uh, and to keep a check basically so the russian watchdog uh, which keeps a control on uh, the groceries the medications may ensures that a normal people do not purchase gloves or hand sanitizers more than the requirement and it can be used for uh, for the medical frontline workers so that's pretty good but there has been a fuzz in the international media that russian test kits are not reliable enough and it is uh, it's giving false reports so it's, um, uh, we are not pretty sure because it's uh, media has always roasted the uh, real facts anywhere uh, it's from india to the worldwide and we could uh, we realize like we the people who live outside we know the understand what's the real situation is my mom calls me and says okay these are the facts and uh, figures coming on whatsapp from russia and is like mom i am here and i need i do understand what the reality is so it's very difficult to convince your parents then your friends in way back in your home country so i would say stay safe and stay informative rather than under, uh, getting admission to this whatsapp university that's what i would recommend mm-hmm. everyone Yeah, it was recently a role reversal for me when I gave a really nice scolding to my my parents not to go out. My dad was like, "No, I'll just take a I'll just take a bike ride and I'll come." I'm like, "No, no, no means no. That you're done here. <laughs> you're grounded." So, <laughs> so that's the role reversal we have we have, and that's quite funny. But yeah, so okay. Uh, so finally. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You can uh, continue. Ah, uh, sorry to interrupt. Like, I would also like to add one point about what Joshit told in Russia about capping or capping up of prices. So similar thing has also taken place related to the hand sanitizer and the masks, especially N95 masks, which were very like thought to be the most useful stuff against this. So government has put a cap really on it, and the reason why the authorities are not asking here. you here to wear masks on a central government basis but the state governments in selective locations are making it compulsory it's because uh, there is a genuine shortage of it so the people who are directly exposed even to the more extent like the way our uh, doctors and other health workers are exposed so it's not the way how i am exposed so i don't need to wear a mask to that extent the way they need it so it's better to preserve it for them even there are s- smaller organizations smaller ngos who are work- working on like making uh, diy type of face shields and which is actually very innovative and they are technically clearing the medical t- uh, that medical standard tests and they are reaching the market so we no need to import more rather we are like trying to make it in home using our small uh, ancillaries whatever we have i think madan has to go for that and then we can start with the last point uh yes uh, regarding regarding the tests uh, and whatever the vaccination or antibody research uh i don't really know exactly how it is going on but i read from some news articles which are the local french news articles where they state that there has been some uh, there has been like a couple of uh, insurers research insurers in france which they call it as a cnrs insurers uh, they have been working on this i don't know particularly in which field like in vaccination creating vaccines or they are going in for the antibody immunity procedure i don't know that but they have been working a lot and uh, as far as i remember the speech from the prime minister macron uh, regarding uh, the scientific um, research uh, he said that um, uh, that he has allocated a good chunk of money into the research and development and said that uh, not the high uh, he said that not the infrastructures on may not and not the big tall buildings but the science and research will really help us out uh, in such situations so i think I madan is getting distracted by the chat window than speaking to the 
Uh, so I, I have now closed the chat <laughs> just to just to avoid distractions and uh, yes so that's all and uh, regarding the mask uh, here we have been I, I have seen people wearing the mask uh, when they are going to the shopping malls or something like that but uh, uh, but also we have been told that you don't use the mask if you don't sneeze or if you don't have cold or something like that because if you wear the mask, we were told that this can create a panic among the public around. And uh, this will again lead to heavy buying of the mask. Uh, as of now, the sanitizers are out of stock. It's like in any, in no pharmacy you can find a sanitizer. And this was not the case like three, three weeks back where I personally got uh, like a 100 ml sanitizer bottle. And I was fortunate enough that two months back I was in India and uh, for, a, for for like a week. And uh, when I came back, my mother gave me two bottles of sanitizers, which is now which is now coming and, in uh, use. <laughs> it's now coming in use. And uh, yeah, my father also gave me some surgical mask, which is of no use, I know. But I still wear it just to feel myself, just to keep it psychologically that I am taking some measures to to be safe. And that's all. That's all from my side. Yes. Yeah, even 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 here, like sanitizers is not available. I have this only this one, and only this much is left for the next time. I I don't know when I'm gonna get it, so I'm just using it very wisely. Like I I, I <laughs> saw in the traveling this vlog in Canada that he's yes, carrying yes. a soap and water with him because there are no sanitizers. Just using soap and water. <laughs> yeah, there's the no sanitizers, and uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, what what are you gonna say? The most we can do is by rubbing alcohol. Like peroxide yeah. and, and, and here you find it, but they are like ten times of the price now. Oh, they're really pricey. Yeah. Fifteen dollars, like when it's supposed to be two or three dollars. Here it is like two. This thing is thirty-five dollars. <laughs> USD. Oh my god. And that is some <laughs> local company, some local shit, and doesn't so, smell. So that's good too. so that's uh, fifteen Canadian dollars. Yeah, fifteen, fifteen Canadian dollars for a Ooh. for a usual for just a bottle, bottle of no, sanitizer. No, the, oh, not no. the big one. I'm not talking about the big one. I'm talking the about small this. one. 12, 12 to 15 and the medium medium sized bottle like 15 and the bigger ones are 30 to 40. Wow. Wow, That's man. what we call economic boom. Yeah, so <laughs> <no>. <laughs> sanitizer is the worldwide uh, most important product in the world right now. After but part. here you can't sell sanitizer more than 100 rupees. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. That's good. Sanitizer is also not available over here. It's, no. it's kind of yeah. stuck. Um, I mean, uh, what we can do is the basic uh, basic hygiene of basic sanitization. And that's what the most we can do. If you stay at home, I think we don't need to use sanitizer every time you stay at home. If you just go out once in a while, you just use it and go out. And and most of the stores are actually doing the sanitizing spray. So I think that can save us a lot. I mean, that's the most we can do right now. So Again, it is like the sanitizer is a kind of a precaution, but the hand wash is a better not. thing. Better hand wash is a better exactly. thing. But for us, it is still okay, but it's already two hours, so we can move to the last point, uh, which is very, uh, I mean, you can just give your practical view. You don't need to like say plus minus. I mean, you can say anything you want, but you don't need to necessarily stand in a position like what will the post pandemic era look like? And uh, so in other words, as I always say in some of the videos, like, so is there light at the end of the tunnel? Like, how will people know, like, okay, this is the point where we need to ease the lockdown and then make it zero? Or, uh, like, people will, every time people will be more conscious of the hygiene after this era? Or, I mean, these are smaller points. And there is also the bigger point, like, many people also ask in the, the YouTube videos because it's about education. So people ask, like, okay, we are going into global recession. And so, what is it going to look like? Like, I mean, obviously, I'm not able to answer those questions, but what will it look like from a perspective of a middle class person who is coming from India or any Asian country and uh, they want to like study here and uh, they are spending some <coughs> money and expecting some return? And for, I mean, we don't know how much time it will take for the economy to rebound. So uh, it's a matter of concern. And I'm just highlighting some of the points and then we, you can just come in from any place you want. We don't need to go it region by region. So 
as WHO has said, like there might be another cycle of the virus in the next winter. So will it be like a regular flu for two, three years? Then will you have lockdown every five months? And so is lockdown, I mean, if I say this now on Twitter, then maybe some people might block me or maybe like damage the everything. But exactly. uh, for now it looks very promising, but is really lockdown the only way to do it or can be something mixed or like, I mean, it's very difficult. Like I cannot address the question. And another thing, uh, yeah, I mean the economy, which I also mentioned in the beginning. So we, anyone can start who wants to join in the discussion. This is our final discussion. So like, like lockdown is like Hanuman getting the full, full hill and putting it for the treatment. And then now is the time where you search for the Sanjeevani booty and do the job. Because that beginning was needed because it's a new virus. Nobody knows what to be done about it. So now what Hanuman did, that's what we had to do. We had to do a full shutdown. But now we have to search what to do, what not to do. And definitely this Bilwada model and things are coming up in India and different parts of the world. Everyone is like but anyhow lockdown is not the way forward it's definitely has to be like there has to be an end to this lockdown in a staggered fashion or in a more intelligent fashion because anyhow economy is going to matter it's we should not end up in a situation where we are not dying of covid but we are dying of losing of jobs or losing of money so that has to be the way forward and even in india and many other countries are planning for the life post lockdown how will be the life post lockdown especially in the it sector where i work i will see i predict that's what i presume that almost every company will now give more importance to this stuff of working from home and also about the thing of having a hand sanitizer in every person's desk and also about washing the hands uh, there is a social distancing uh, uh, protocol that we maintain whenever we enter a lift of the building. So those things are going to be intact for quite a bit of time now. And yes, at an international level, if we see the international market is going to see a huge transition, not just in terms of polarization of like Chinese virus, racism. I'm not talking in that sense, but huge transition in the sense of understanding of health. Because if you ask to anyone today, health is like that's where not people invest more, but now people will go and invest more amount of more percentage of their GDP into health. And today there was a discussion in Twitter going on telling about like what IT did for the world or what the uh, like the booming sector of IT and telecom did for India back in those days. Now it can be replicated in medical because it is also similarly liberalized sector. But again, there are certain complexities which make the liberalization a bit low side. So yeah, this thing will definitely put a, a like open up the lock and the, and the respect what we carry for the police for or the health workers is going to climb up. Yeah, and uh, definitely that's the way forward according to what I see. Okay, I think Asis and Madan are really eager to speak so they can start. I want to add something in in my understanding the after effects of this pandemic we are really blowing it out of proportion because all you need to do is just to look at your history there have been much bigger plagues much massive destructions because of uh, much bigger pandemics in the history all you need to do is just to check how people have revived how economies have revived and get uh, uh, motivation from that that's that's it just have a look into the future. For example, bubonic plague in the 15th or 16th century. That was that was 100 times more massive than this one. People well, have revived. Europe Economies have out. revived. Europe revived. Yeah. Not to forget Spanish flu. Yeah, Spanish exactly. flu. Even there Indians are many, there are died many. a lot. <laughs> there are many. Yeah, but, yeah. but the point is the era back then and the era today is a bit different. Like uh, yes. We can't exactly replicate the thing, but yeah, the concept can be the same. Yeah, but there is not just one pandemic that happened in 16th century. Every Even the recent H1N1 centuries. pandemic we can see, like yeah. in India only we lost 18,000 lives in that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So in every century or the other you have these pandemics, they come, they destroy and then we get our strength back again yeah. and we are up and running again. That's how it works. That will work. I am optimistic. Yeah. So as in German, as they say, bleib gesund. 
Life cool. Life cool. Yeah. This shows why you got the PR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and, uh, Actually, if this if this COVID Fashion situation it. hadn't come, yeah, then today I would have been in Wuhan technically. Oh my God! God bless oh you. Oh my God! But <laughs> it was my really? own mistake. It was I. It was my own mistake that I submitted the documents a week late, and the processing started a week late, and then it got frozen. Yeah. It was January oh, the twenty third when it went for a stamping, and it got frozen when Chinese government put em- employed a. uh like complete total lockdown in those places blessing in this guys my friend yeah <laughs> god bless you <laughs> i yeah. would say that i also have a very similar standard ashish i mean life goes on the show must yeah, go on as on. everyone says so um so the thing is that to be very practical people there are two things either you find the vaccine or you find way to not get contaminated So yeah. these two are the answers to the question. If you get a vaccine, then all good, you'll get cured, no issues. But I think slowly people are already trying. Like some states are uh, here in US are getting back the non-essential things, like people are wearing masks, people are wearing gloves, social distancing. All these are the precautions which mm, will be mastered slowly by everyone, and the people will get used to their regular lives in that way, yeah. with some yeah. alterations, I guess. Yeah. the cases from 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 my perspective the cases cannot be zero at any point of time at least this 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 pandemic is on a like last for at least a year and a half right now uh, and some some waves will happen some cases there will never be never be a situation where the case will go down to zero it will gradually decrease from time from from a time from from a period of period of time and then people i think when you say like uh, it has affected it will affect people a lot in terms of like the concerts won't happen as much as much frequently as possible like a uh, lot of public gatherings will have very limited audience limited number of tickets the prices will shoot up that those kind of stuff ca- can happen but uh when in in terms of social distancing people are more aware right now even for me like i have become more hygiene hygienic like like never before right now so and people have learned new skills they are buying essential stuff which they need so those kind of stuff will happen and uh, and in terms of vaccine vaccine see a vaccine to develop a fully fledged vaccine will take a year and a half a year at least so till because they have to find the exact cure and they have to test it as well so that that is a totally different that 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 can span for a long time of long period of time and regarding the economy boosting so right now it's down so it will go down till we don't like uh, unlock the lockdown so government have measures so that that's why they have the gdp and the contingency fund to provide the to support this businesses once this once this businesses will start and they take like proper health and sanitary measures the economy will come back to its own position as what uh, ashish said that uh, th- we have to take inspiration from the other pandemics that have happened in the future and and implement more better measures taking from and what mistakes were done that time so to implement this thing faster so that's what i feel so we have to just be patient and just not panic right now and um, that's what i feel yeah if uh, i'll add something if i may so um due to the lockdown and everything after this lockdown and everything uh, over uh, i'm speaking both from a swedish and indian context actually so uh, one of the things that uh, samit bhai asked was uh, regarding education actually i am doing a study now on how these things will affect the higher education i have an assignment to submission on this wednesday actually <laughs> regarding oh, this nice. <laughs> yeah so and i was just in uh, touch with the eit uh, guys over here uh, who which is like european institute of uh, technology you know energy and everything so they were having a really nice concept and how these thing will affect the higher education per se so i'll definitely share that research after i'm done with that i'll probably do it from a indian context and uh, yeah the now that the education is over economy i would say this is a very uh, good time for the indian economy to just step up the game uh, like uh, uh, currently my focus is on manufacturing part uh, manufacturing economy and now that many uh, companies they are trying to move from china uh, to move out like japan has uh, already 
um, I guess they have already make a deal of like 2.1 billion dollars. They have a package of 2.1 billion dollars of Japanese company to move out of Japan. That's a very huge in uh, like investment or uh, there's a very huge opportunity for India to grab that uh, opportunity over there and uh, grab those companies to move to India. Uh, South Korea is trying to move uh, its uh, manufacturing parts from uh, China to China to uh, some other place. That's a opportunity over there. There would be huge, huge uh, changes in the supply chain now that the resiliency is tested to its limits and uh, uh, the fashion industry would be moving Italian and Chinese. It's an opportunity for India to take up or game up the manufacturing market uh, per se. And uh, yeah, um, uh, one more thing I would say is that people are taking health uh, pretty seriously lately, which is really good, which was not the case uh, while uh, um, from an Indian perspective, which was never really the uh, case, I would say. But uh, this is this is good to see that people are taking up health uh, seriously and they will be moving toward a more healthier lifestyle. They now see which things are of real value and they should invest their time and money in. Okay, Asis, thank you for joining. It was really pleasant. Yeah, guys, yeah. Two hour fifteen. It was a, it was amazing to connect with. It was so pleasing to see all of you guys. And we'll do more collabs in the future. And um, yes, sure, just to sure. close, yeah, uh, it was amazing. And like, I, I, I definitely had plans for Europe this year, but it. So next year, I, I hope uh, I'll, I'll be able to visit you guys. So yeah. it'll be, it'll be your great. Wife. Your family. Yes, yes, absolutely. So yeah. let's see, let's see. And family, um, if so possible. see you guys. My Come mom on, is yes, calling yeah. and I have to answer. <laughs> bye bye. Good. Thank you. Take bye, care, bye. Bro. bye. Are you sure it's mom? Should also have it. He escaped in the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Continue if you are saying something, the BLO channel. No. It's fine, man. Uh, yeah. That's it, I think, from my part. He says unmuted his microphone. He's unmuting it frequently, so he wants to say something. Now Asis is in form. Me? No. There is only one Asis left right now. I'm done with whatever <laughs> I had to say. Yeah, but I agree with uh, the Baloch on what he said. It's an amazing opportunity for India to actually grab and but but india is still the biggest hub for uh, service sector industry india needs to really expand its wings and come to other sectors as well as madan rightly mentioned r and d needs to grow and yeah but that's not for the youtube that's the general thing that i'm saying okay i think we are still, that, we are still heavily yeah. dependent on the service based industry we are still providing services to foreign companies who are developing products and just uh, leading the market so Any more thoughts before we end? No, Madan? Madan was the originator of this call. Like, uh, it was not my idea. It was his idea. He gave me the idea for this call. So you might have seen him in many videos. So you'll recognize he's a very famous person. Yes, and uh, thank you everyone for joining and also uh, everyone who has already left. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit it. I will think about it because I don't think that uh, putting a two hour, 30 minutes uh, video <laughs> is a good idea. So yeah. You really I'm have to right. collapse Definitely it into not. maybe 20 minutes or so. Before we go, uh, don't forget to like the video if you like it and share among your friends because everyone was uh, asking many questions so you'll get an idea and later you'll find all these familiar faces in separate in-person or Skype interviews uh, about the specific topics in those countries and those fields. And before we go, don't forget to also subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And yeah, I think that's it. Stay healthy. Stay, stay healthy, healthy and stay positive. Yes, go Corona. Corona go. <laughs> <laughs> corona jare. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so that that's a nice ending. Now I'll stop. <laughs>